How to dye with indigo, three ways to use your fresh leaves. Today I'm going to take you through some cool steps to achieve various colours on my channel Billy Hello, welcome back to my channel Billy New. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to uh, naturally dye with indigo, fresh, the fresh leaf method. We've already done this before, but we're revisiting it with a few extra uh, experiments along the way. Um, if you like our videos and are interested by the products that I make, please head over to my website, which is billynew.com. And I have an Instagram as well, which is Billy New Apparel. Um, yeah, to see more of what we get up to. So I'm going to be, sh as I said before, I'm going to be showing you how to naturally dye with indigo. I'm going to be using fresh leaves and salt. It's called the salt extraction method. Um, I have done a video on this before last summer, um, but it wasn't, didn't have that much information in it. So I'm going to talk a bit more in this video and I'm going to try some more experiments with the, the fresh leaves. Um, I've been really inspired this summer watching watching people like the Dogwood Dyer, everybody knows she's my favourite dyer, and also Sea Spell Fibre, that's Brittany Bowles. Um, she also has an account called Indigo Fest, I think it's Indigo Fest, um, and yeah, they've really inspired me to try out some, some new techniques, so I'm going to take you through them today. This method um, works best with protein fibres like silk and wool. Um, this is a silk noir that I've got, um, but I've also got some other fibres that I've treated with soy milk, um, just to experiment, see how that works as well. This is a bamboo fibre, this is a vintage linen and a cotton flannel, I guess that is. Um, I've also treated this silk um, with soy milk as well. So I'm actually going to... I don't often do this, but I'm, <laughs> I don't often do this, but I'm actually going to weigh this um, fibre that I'm going to be dyeing today, um, and I'm also going to weigh the leaves that I, the indigo leaves that I. <laughs> Sorry, the budgies are making a lot of noise. Uh, the indigo leaves that I pick as well. So I'm just going to take this over to my scales. I don't think I need a bowl. While I go and pick the indigo, I'm going to soak this fibre. Now I'm going to go and pick my indigo leaves. So right now we're at the back of our little house, um, our little townhouse, and we don't have a garden. And I did attempt to have some kind of dye garden in pots this year, but I wasn't very successful. Um, I just managed to grow some indigo and some marigolds in the end um, and a sunflower who's not out yet but hopefully he'll well he's out but not it not as big as he could be um, yeah so here are my indigo plants they're not as healthy as they could be I don't think you can see there's some damage there um, they have been abused a little bit we did go away for a week or so they didn't get any water and I've got my daughter who's constantly touching and playing with them which is great but it means that they're probably not as um, healthy as they could be. These ones I actually took some stems from the other ones and we uh, put them in water and they rooted out and then I put them into this pot to kind of hopefully get more. So actually I'm going to cut these and I'm going to save the stems again and hopefully they'll root out and I can plant again and then maybe have one more go at some fresh leaf dyeing this summer. So here goes. I'm gonna start with you. Always feel mean cutting them. These indigo plants were actually grown from the seeds I had last year um, from Liz at the Dogwood Dyer. 
Um, and they, I think it's quite difficult to get um, second year seeds to germinate. And they did take quite a while to germinate. But as you can see, I did get some. But the first time round last year when I used them, um, they sprouted really quickly. Um, so just to note there, if you're, if you're growing your own indigo, make sure that the seeds are from um, that year, I guess. So while I'm picking the leaves off the stems, um, I'm picking them because the stems apparently don't have any of the blue colour in them, it's more, more the leaves, but I'm going to try and explain a little bit of the science. It hurts my brain a little bit, so please forgive me if I get it <laughs> a little bit wrong, but um, it's important to work with the leaves um, as soon as you pick them. Um, while the glucose and the indican, indican molecules are still separate. Once you start to break them down, once you start to break the leaves down, they kind of get together and form indoxyl, which is the, the beautiful blue colour. Um, and I think once you start to see the actual blue, you'll see when I start working with this, it's kind of a, a greeny, um, yellowy colour. Once you start to see the actual blue colour, it's kind of almost too late because you can't work with it anymore. You can't get that blue onto your fibre. It becomes insoluble. Um, so I hope that was some kind of explanation. You can see there on some of these damaged leaves, you can see they're quite blue but that's already kind of spent that blue colour. You can't access that now to get onto the fibre. It's all in these fresh leaves. So going, yeah, like I said um, before, I'm gonna save the stems and put them in water um, and they'll root out really quickly. I was surprised the last time I did this, um, just put them in water and within about two days they had roots about that long. So that's quite cool if you have your own indigo plants and you want to share some with your friends, get them to join the indigo party. I have to say, I think that this isn't really that many leaves that I've got here and I've got quite a lot of fiber but personally, I really like the kind of light, pale, um, aquatic-y blue that you get from the fresh leaf method. I'm not really aiming for the as dark a blue as possible. So hopefully I'll get some cool results with this. Okay, so now I've picked all my leaves off my stalks. I'm going to put my stalks in some water. Voila. There you go. Have some water. Put them in the sun. Next, I'm going to weigh the leaves. The only I'm not really doing this for any particular reason, apart from the fact that I'm just curious because I really don't think I've got a lot of leaves there to get so much colour. But it's always good to keep notes so you know for next time. So, I don't know if they'll all fit in this bowl. And I just want an excuse to try out my new scale. Nineteen. I'll say 98 because there's a few that have fallen around the sides. Now I'm going to just put some salt. This is just kind of big lumpy sea salt and start massaging it. And 
I really feel like actually most of the things that you do with natural diet like cooking and the more you kind of do it the more you get a feel for it I actually haven't worked that much with indigo so I don't I'm not really an expert but I definitely truly feel that the more you do something the more you learn it's kind of obvious really isn't it and it can be quite an intuitive process once you start trusting yourself okay I'm going to get some of the fibre now just put it in there actually just going, I'm actually just going to take a small sample of this bamboo for like sample purposes because I do feel like I've got a little bit too much fibre for the amount of leaves that I've got so, so in goes my silk bamboo fibre um, a little bit of linen and flannel I think ideally I would have a lot more um, leaves to go on top of this you can see at the moment the kind of colours like a bright yellowy greeny colour and that's good because it means that we we can still get at the indigo mm, I love this amazing turquoisey colour I've been kneading this for about, I don't know, five, ten minutes um, and, and look at this incredible colour. If I had more indigo plants, I would have definitely um, added some more, some more um, fresh leaves to try and keep extracting more colour. But for now, this is what I've got. So I'm working with what I've got and it's still a beautiful colour. I'm trying to get these bits off because I want to try the next phase of the experiment by reusing this leftover mash but I think that's all I'm going to get off there and um, this is the bamboo fibre Of pale turquoise. You can see the difference between the bamboo and the silk. Ooh, smelly. the way the dye gets into your fingers, into your fingernails. Okay. So, so as I said before, um, I'm going to kind of continue trying to extract colour from from uh, the indigo. I've never I've never done this before, so it's quite it's going to be. Uh, a surprise either it'll work either it won't we'll see tomorrow but I'm going to take all this mash and I'm going to put it in my jar I'm going to put the liquid in as well I've seen some really great nice results with this this summer. I don't know. I think I'm going to add a little bit of liquid to that. Um, yeah, I am going to. I'm going to use my intuition and add a 
tiny bit of liquid. I'm just going to use this. I'm going to take a little sample of the silk. I'll be so happy if this works. I'm going to push him in there. Right into the into the mash. And I'm going to take a little bit of the bamboo. And a little bit of the linen. So my daughter's scissors. And a little bit of the I was hoping to do bigger samples, but it's kind of like spinach. You think you've got loads, but then it turns out to be not very much. Right, so I'm going to put a lid on this and then I'm going to leave it overnight and in a warm place. Um, so I might put it next to the oven when we're cooking dinner or maybe outside because it's really hot at the moment. Um, in a sunny spot and then hopefully I'll have a nice surprise in the morning. So yesterday I took you through um, the salt extraction method with the fresh leaves of my indigo plants um, and I just wanted to first of all show you the results. They're dry now but I haven't washed them but they're still pretty gorgeous. Um, a bit stinky actually as well. Um, so th this is the bamboo fibre, some linen, some vintage linen and some flannel. You can see, and this is raw silk, and you can see that the the silk, which is a protein fibre, has taken the, the colour much more vibrantly. Um, later on I'll give these a, a wash in some cool water with some uh, pH neutral soap and yeah hopefully the colours will stay the same. So yesterday I put all my mash from the from massaging it with the salt um, into this jar and the reason I did this was because I wanted to see if I could get something that's called Indie Rubin. Um, and this is the first time I've ever done this and the first time I've ever heard of Indi Rubin um, and I heard about that from from Indigo Fest Iris <laughs> um, so she did a couple of demonstration videos on her Instagram on the Indigo Fest Instagram and she sh demonstrated that you can get um, a red pigment after after the blue pigment if you apply a little bit of heat I haven't looked at this yet, but I'm, I can see a little bit of something that might be called reddish color there, um, but I'm not super hopeful. So if I don't have a um, vibrant result here, I'm probably gonna go and heat it up and see if I can extract some, um, some more of the Indie Rubin. Um, this is all just me experimenting now. I'm not that versed in indigo. So I've just opened this pot. Oh, and I'm gonna smell it. It's pretty stinky. Well, like not stinky, but it's got a very distinct smell. Um, I'm just gonna get a pot to put this for samples in. So I'm hoping that I'll have got some kind of um, ready, purpley kind of hues on some of my samples. I'm not sure. Oh yes, I have. Oh, amazing. Look. You can see where the leaves have been in contact and heated up a little bit. It's gone kind of reddish color. I think most of this kind of blue will wash out of the sample now because it was already blue um, when I put the fibre into the 
into the mash and once indigo's turned blue um, it's not it, not soluble anymore and you can't get it onto the fibre so that'll probably just wash off. Oh I'm really happy with that. I wasn't expecting it to be, I mean it's wet there. I'll leave it for 24 hours before I give it a wash but yeah there's definite red red hues. I've seen some people get purples. Um, that one didn't really make any difference, maybe just slightly darker blue. That one too. These were the samples that I dyed with the um, with the uh, with the salt, and these are the samples which I actually added later, which didn't have any dye on them already. And you can see this one's got some red on it as well. It's really subtle but it's definitely there so I'm really pleased for my first experiment. I think next time <clears throat> instead of leaving it overnight I'll heat the liquid up straight away on my stove. Yeah these are so all the samples that already had the colour in from this from from massaging the leaves didn't really get any red extra red on them but the two extra that I added afterwards after we finished filming yesterday because I suddenly thought I should do that have got some red on them. The next step in my experimentation I am going to with this um, still with the leftover mash and the liquid I'm going to try and make a fructose fat and I've never done that before either so that's going to be a fun experiment. Oh, actually, I said that some of these samples that were already dyed with the with the leaves didn't take any red, but this one looks like it's got a bit of red on it as well. That's the silk again. Ah, I'm really happy with that. see how blue the liquid is which means there's a lot of indigo in there still. I'm going to top this up with a bit more water. Okay. So this is the the sciencey bit which is always the bit that scares me the most because it's kind of actual weights and numbers rather than just chucking stuff into a pot. So I've got my mash there and the liquid um, and I'm going to do a fructose fat which is using sugar to um, help extract the indigo or make it more available to dye with. Um, I'm going to be using lime as well which I've ordered from a company called Wild Colours and they're based in the UK um, and this fructose which I just um, bought in my local organic shop. So according to the cute iris over at Indigo Fest I need approximately 30 grams of fructose and I'm wearing a mask because whenever you work with powders you should always wear a mask especially things like lime um, and I think we've all got masks in abundance at the moment so it's not going to be a problem to find one um, so on thirty grams of fructose. There are, there's other ways of getting fructose into your vat, so which I'm going to try at some point. Um, you can like boil up fruit skins, like orange skins and banana peels, and use the liquid, um, the sugary liquid from that. Oh, 31. Just a tiny bit back in there. 28. So 30 grams of fructose, and here goes. I'm. I'm a bit frightened, but I'm just going to chuck it in. And 
and then so this is the calcium hydroxide I think you can use um, pickling lime so stuff food grade pickling lime as well it's the same thing this is an estimate based on on the videos that I've watched from Indigo Fest but I think I'm hoping that they should be about right so that's my lime going in I hope I'm doing this right. I'm going to stir it up a bit. And then I'm going to heat this on the stove for until it gets to 140 degrees. And then wait, and hopefully uh, it will start turning into a usable vat. Okay, just a low heat. I'm gently stirring it. It's been about an hour-ish since I um, put my indigo vat on the stove and I heated it up gently and then I just let it sit for a while um, and I put this on top to kind of keep the, the heat in and I did just look at it a, a minute ago and I it doesn't actually look that healthy so we're gonna see what happens. I mean it's got a kind of shiny top to it, but there's no flower. Um, kind of looks like something my daughter Billy would love to play with in her kitchen. And it's super like orange. I don't know if maybe I put some, too much um, fructose or, or lime in there. If anyone knows, please tell me. Anyway, I did put a tiny bit of fabric in um, about 10 minutes ago. So I'm going to take it out and see what's happening. See, look how orange it is, or yellow. I'm going to oxidize it over here. Yellow. I'm not sure if that's going to stay on the fibre. Look, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So it's got kind of a filmy top, but yeah, it's really orange. I feel like I've done something wrong with the, the amounts of powder I put in there. But anyway, I'm going to dunk that silk in there right down to the bottom and this is um, the bamboo fibre that I didn't use yesterday because I didn't think I had enough leaves and I'm just going to squish it in hopefully it won't all go over the top yeah it looks almost like rusty water I'm going to leave that for you know, 10 minutes been about 10 15 minutes I've left my um, cellulose fiber so there's bamboo silk in there and some a little small um, sample of silk and I'm gonna take it out and aerate it in this water adding adding the oxygen back into it so it turns well hopefully turns a blue color Yeah, it looks kind of gross, but look at that. It's kind of orangey yellow colour. Let's give it a little squeeze. And then I'm just going to take this back over to the sink. So going greeny colour. 
looks like, looks like it's actually working. Weirdly, the I prefer the colour on the cellulose fibre than the silk. And with the with the um, fresh leaf method, it's more successful on on the protein fibres unless you treat the the cellulose fibres with soy milk. But when you make a vat like this, you can actually even put unmordanted cellulose fibres into the vat and they, they will pick up the colour, so that's quite cool. It's really subtle. Obviously I didn't have very many leaves in there. I'm still surprised at the colours that I seem to have got. I'm just going to let these uh, kind of hang up for a little while. And then I might put them back in again for another dip. See how I feel. It's got a stain on it anyway. I took the um, pH of the vat and it was a I think 10 or 10 or 11, um, which is very a very base pH. So when I went, when I finished with this, uh, before throwing it down the sink, I'm going to put some vinegar in there to try and. Um, bring the pH back into balance before yeah before throwing it down the drain. So that was my fresh leaf indigo adventure. I've got three steps here. Um, the first step and the results from the first step were was the fresh leaf salt extraction method. So just kneading the the, the fibres with with the salt and the leaves. And I've got these really nice kind of teal and blue colours. The next phase was adding a little bit of heat to the leaves to try and just to see, I just wanted to see if I could find a bit of red and I, it's just a tiny bit but I'm still super excited about this and um, you can see there's some red there and if I had more leaves I'd, I'd be doing more experiments right, right now to try and get more reds and with larger pieces of fabric. Um, that one's kind of more of just vaguely brown. <laughs> Um, and then we made a fructose vat after we left that overnight, um, which I didn't think was going to work because it looked a bit like um, a swamp in there, but it seems to have worked like really well on this bamboo, bamboo fibre. I love this kind of teal, baby blue kind of colour. Um, I kind of just squashed it into the, into the pot to get a kind of tie-dye effect. I'm still really surprised at how much blue is coming out, coming out from the leaves. Um, we'll see tomorrow how it stands up for the wash, how the colour stands up for the wash. Um, that was a bit of linen that I just put in there first to see if it was working. And uh, this is the silk, which actually is my least favourite of the three samples. And normally it's the silk that kind of takes the, the colour the best. So. There we go. Always a surprise, always a lesson, always some magic to be had with natural dyes. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you found this useful. I really wanted to take you through this experiment exactly as it happened and I only had a few leaves so I only had one chance anyway. I'm a total beginner when it comes to indigo and I really wanted to highlight the importance of just doing and experimenting as I already feel like I've learned so much and I now have the confidence to continue experimenting with this incredible colour and process. If you enjoy our videos, please let us know in the comments below. Like and subscribe and tag me at Billy New Apparel on Instagram to show me your results.